of all, this is a great thing to do on a Friday afternoon because on Monday, I want you all to check back in with David and Josh and tell them how many hours you spend surfing for amazing videos on TikTok. I love this platform and I am not the demographic, but I love the platform because what you see is a joy and authenticity that we don't see on other platforms right now. I like to think of TikTok as, I'm gonna say it as sort of talent scout meets America's funniest videos. Um, the, the interplay between people, the creativity is phenomenal and we are Really lucky today to have Maddie Lynn with us. Maddie um, is the uh, head of uh, monetization and partnerships at TikTok, and Billy Mann from uh, Mancom Creative Partners, who actually does a lot of matching brands and TikTok creators to do some wonderful things. So, are they up in our windows? Can we see Maddie and Billy? Yep, everyone's uh, up. Hey, Robin. Everybody's up. Great. So to, to kick off, I'm just, just to give you a sense of the enormity of TikTok, I, I did a little research. TikTok app has been downloaded 2 billion times. About 1 billion of those are in the last year. So it's a meteoric rise. 41% of TikTok users are um, between 16 and 24 years old. It's a demographic that is very much energized and engaged right now. And when it comes to daily time spent on TikTok, 52 minutes, which is uh, put some of the other social media platforms to shame. So I'd love to start by asking Maddie, give us a little bit of context on how TikTok started and really became a US, the US phenomena it is. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, first of all, thank you, George. Thank you, Robin for having me today. And uh, I saw some of the audience here were smiling when Josh plays the scissor reel. That's exactly you know, the reaction you know, we expect to see, we want to see. And to answer your question, Robin, you know, as everyone you know, likely is aware about TikTok, you know, we are the leading destination for short form mobile video. And our mission is to inspire creativity and bring joys to the users around the world. Um, as, as a user, as you probably can, you know, as you watch and create the majority of the content you find on the app, it's 15 to 30 seconds, um, the length of that video. So that really kind of speaks to, um, you know, a couple of different things or kind of differentiators how TikTok compared to other kind of platforms um, in the marketplace. Um, TikTok video is, is real is quirky, is fun. You know, TikTok video is about being authentic, being inclusive and uh, positive. And that type of content you expect to see um, on the platform every day. And, uh, and Robert, I think you capture the essence of the TikTok. You know, it's a content platform, it's a talent platform, it's an entertainment platform. So compared to other platforms, you know, who are more kind of created and centered around, you know, friends and family type of circle, TikTok meant to be, you know, for everyone to discover what's outside of that circle, what's, you know, going on around the world. And also on the other hand is, you know, for them to be fun by other people. So it's content graph driven versus social graph driven. I think that's a very uh, important kind of point to mention as well. Um, and uh, um, lastly, as you probably you know can tell, TikTok becomes the birthplace of a lot of you know cultural moment, a lot of memes, you know, a lot of pop songs on Spotify on the billboard every day. So what does it mean for the brands is very important. You know, it flips you know the head of the traditional marketing, how they should uh, approach, how they should reach and engage the next generation of the audience. So this is something you know, I'm happy to kind of dig deeper um, as we proceed. Yeah, Maddie, we will dig deeper into brands for sure, but uh, we talked ahead of time and I will say that you know, there's this elephant in the room and that is the geopolitical climate at the moment and um, TikTok um, faces a lot of um, tumult coming out of India, Hong Kong, 
the U.S. and Mike Pompeo. So talk to us for a minute. I know this is not your job. You're not the policy guy. But talk to us about how TikTok is thinking about this moment. Yeah, and, and, and thank you for bringing this up. You know, I know it's uh, kind of a lot of questions, a lot of statements have appeared in the media, in the press recently. So I'm happy to, to answer and address, you know, today. Um, look, our mission is to inspire, you know, creativity and bring joys. And that's really defining who we are. And also that's a guiding principle of what do we do, how we operate. So for us, there's no higher, there's no higher priority to promote and provide safe and a secure environment for the users. I, I know there's some kind of speculations in the, in the media press. You know, we repeatedly, you know, shared and told other um, audience, we never share data with Chinese government. We wouldn't do so even we were asked to. Our team, TikTok is led by US CEO and we have resource team set up you know, across product, content moderation, policy, government, everything in the US from the West Coast to Washington DC. So I know there's some kind of speculation in the market, marketplace. So we were definitely happy to clarify about that. Um, TikTok in, in the past two years, we are very proud, you know, of what we accomplished. And, uh, you know, in terms of bringing joy, in terms of driving the value for the users and the brands. And so we are committed to that. We are, we are committed to, you know, being transparent with all of our stakeholders, including governments, including law enforcement, including all the users on the platform. So that's a committed commitment we are making, you know, to all the stakeholders today and every day. Yeah, I think our audience, and we'll share the link afterward, would love to see the transparency study that you just put out about yep. what materials are gathered and information, because it's certainly there's a recommendation at the bottom of all this wonderful interactivity. There's a recommendation engine that knows what you like and lets you control seeing more of what you like. So we'll definitely link out to the transparency study and totally Appreciate your candor. And the other thing for uh, the audience to know, somebody asked a question, we'll just clarify, ByteDance is the owner um, of TikTok and it is a Chinese company. So um, we can all speculate on things, but we'll just clear that. And more important for you and for our listeners, I think, is to move the conversation to why brands should care that all of these kids are creating. And to that end, I know you've rolled out some tools to make it really um, exciting for uh, brands to participate in the platform. Why don't you um, talk a little bit about that match that you're seeing between brands and the content creators? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's a definitely a new um, vehicle for the brands, for other marketers to explore, you know, the innovative ways, the creative way to build meaningful connection with their audience, you know, their existing users or their next generation of customers. Um, as I mentioned, it's really about being authentic. You know, this is going to be the keywords or theme, I think you mentioned in the beginning as well. You know, it's kind of really kind of reflecting of what are those audience are looking for from the brands, you know, from the voice, from the messaging, from the tone, from the from the format, from the content they're creating for the audience. Um, you know, one thing we found very um, insightful about Gen Z and, uh, and the millennials, right? So they, being on the social platform sometimes, you know, makes them antisocial, makes them anxious about that. And TikTok provides a very much open environment for them to seek creativity, to express themselves. Because you know what those generations, they want to stand for something. They want to stand up for something. And that's exactly what the, they want from the brands as well. So we, we always share kind of the guidance with brands. It's about you know, how you want to you know, be authentic yourself as a brand. What's your voice? Why you want to create? What's the message? What's the content you want to create 
to build that meaningful bridge with your audience, right? And for yeah. us, you know, compared to the traditional marketing, something gonna be very interesting is what's the balance between, you know, pull and push marketing. So the, it's not one size for all, you know, from, market, from marketer's perspective, TikTok really provides a vehicle for the brands to be collaborative, to really kind of create a forum to connect with the community. So we have a dedicated team, you know, to work with them very closely on the brand strategy, creative strategy, creative strategy to really kind of build set meaningful connections. Yeah, and I think you were very early TikTok to understand that um, the new marketing dollars are really to show what your brand stands for as much as what product you would like people to buy. And I think that's great, but you have certain actually really specific things like the creative marketplace, yeah. which like a, 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 a talent uh, board where uh, brands can look for the right relationship, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, a small I'm, business initiative also, right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, so you're right, Robin. Um, so I don't know if um, some of you watched the new fronts we launched um, I think end of June last month. So we launched a TikTok for business, which essentially is umbrella and uh, you know brand and a platform that really house all the solutions for the existing and the new clients, you know, to give them the tools, the solutions, the best practice the instructions, you know, in terms of how they can navigate through on the platform and build the connections uh, with TikTok users, their audience. And uh, for SMB self-serve, um, you definitely are up to date to where we are. Um, yeah, so it's, um, we, during the COVID, we launched um, a couple of initiatives, including back to business initiative. You know, we, as a company, we allocate 100 million fund at credit to support the business of all size across the world to help them back to the, you know, normal, back to the business. So that's kind of the part of the overall kind of social corporate social responsibility we are doing. And uh, I think you also mentioned the self-serve. Um, we launched that um, platform last week or two weeks ago now. Um, it's really, you know, meant to be serving the business of our size, not just Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, but also those mom and pop shop, you know, it's important for us to help them to, you know, to drive the result, to drive the business, to help them, you know, financially, everything. Um, you know, we launched that platform last um, two weeks ago and we had a dedicated resource and fund to support that. Yeah. Yeah, and you've done a lot for Heroes and for COVID. There's really, if you go to the website, there's an astounding amount of initiatives to help us through this time. But I'm gonna invite Billy Mann in now because Billy lives and breathes this and really, um, scouted one of the most successful campaigns to date on TikTok. So Billy, um, why don't you give us a little background about who you are, how this works, and how you use TikTok with brands and talent? Well, fortunately for the TikTok community, I am not the one actually personally using the platform, but, um, but I absolutely, uh, I, I represent some really talented um, folks that do. Um, my background is I have a music background. Um, I always tell people uh, music was the first platform in the technological world that had the shortest attention span and the shortest amount of time to get people to buy in to the talent we work with. And I think some of those skills have been transferable for me and other people in the business that I'm in. Um, working with TikTok really is an evolution just as the music industry as a whole has been migrating with the technology um, really, you know, I remember when Napster started, it was disruptive and it's been a series of disruptive events and disruptive, I think, uh, disruptive in positive ways, but disruptive in ways that forced the typical cadence of the music industry to change the way it thought about consumers, fans, artists, and how to go from being a broker to being an is, a disintermediary element in that relationship. And what led me to, to now is really the talent discovery piece. You know, today, 
you know, when I started out as a songwriter, which is my background, if you were an artist or a talent, we had open mic nights, uh, stand-up comedians went to clubs and tried to sign up on a list. Maddie, I I'm sure you did it. Um, uh, you know, Josh, I'm sure you've been to uh, clubs and found uh, bands or singers that you never heard of before because you went to a destination and you had that experience. And what we're experiencing now, one, because the screens have consistently gotten smaller, the consumer choices on a global basis, and I just know this from my background as a record executive, you know, when you ask a lot of people, let's say in Latin America, to choose between a desktop computer and a mobile phone, they go to the mobile phone because that choice is economically more sound and that reflects the lifestyle they're living. And so what we're really doing is we're experiencing a talent discovery pool change, not just in terms of who and how and when, but really um, in what ways, what rabbit holes do we get to crawl into and discover, not just the layer, the broad layer, which the music industry and entertainment has been about for a long time, but really the niche voices and really the the tailor-made experiences for each fan. And when I say that to you, I'm in the large, I want large commercially successful talent. That's what I focus on. And, you know, I worked with Techonomy at a past event with Alex Iono, who just exploded on YouTube, who's the original mashup guy. And I, I watched and experienced his career through that platform. But like Sean Mendes came through Vine and I had artists that were selling tours on MySpace. We've moved to a world where it's a pluralist digital platform marketplace. And TikTok has shown up, I think, um, in an unusual uh, convergence of events that is speaking to everybody. And what I've found is that like anything, you're going to find when you have, you know, billions of likes on a single user, you're going to have tons of voices. But what's what I find the most interesting is that you can find your own voice. Sometimes your own voice is not the voice you want to hear. And sometimes it's who you need to connect to. My look at TikTok in general and what's been fun, and I represent uh the D'Amelio family, which Charlie D'Amelio is the number one talent on TikTok. She's uh, a, a year ago from when we're talking all of us now, she was being carpooled to dance classes by her mom, Heidi. And now they're on the cover of the Hollywood Reporter as a family and magazine covers and in partnerships with brands that speak to them, um, frankly, in an unprecedented manner. And the aspirational element of this, I think, is exciting for music, exciting for magicians, exciting for dancers, and exciting for brands. And what I've been focused on from the get-go, at least as someone who started as a creator, is how do you build alternative means for talent to be able to sustain themselves, to make a living, to have fun, and connect with other people in a way that gives them freedom? So by background, I'm a creative person, and I love... Uh, I don't just love, but it's um, the adventure of learning these platforms and seeing how you can build that relationship between a great talent, a great artist, and a great brand. Um, it, it's seamless now. And I think it's only going to get stronger and more powerful. So I know you brought a, a, a tape of Charlie and her family, and yeah. it's just like totally fun to watch Charlie's um, um, maturation as the, I saw her on, I think, Stephen Colbert or what a, Jimmy Fallon. Or, yeah. And, and, and for those of you that don't know, Jimmy Fallon was actually super instrumental in TikTok by launching early on. He said, I found this app and we're going to do a tumbleweed challenge where you all have to, when you hear this horn blow, you're going to lay down and roll around. And it went totally viral and TikTok was on this trajectory. So let's see what Charlie and her family look like. Josh, can you run that for a sec? I know that I stayed at home Cause I was on a better alone But when you said you let us know I know that was the end of it all I should have stayed at home Baby, come give me something on. Oh. Sun's up, I 
already want to lay down. Friends calling, I ain't really trying to go out. Okay, so now, so now we need the translation. Kid sister is another one of your talents that you represent, correct? Yes. Kid, so kid sister, which is the like number one TikTok uh, rock chart, they're a girl band. Um, it's a it's a great story. Another example there early on. Um, Alex Iono is an example of an artist who's transferring platforms and moving with the marketplace and finding his own voice on the platform, having fun with it. And obviously, the D'Amelio family are they're really the flagship. Um, there's a lot of great talent there, but um, I, I look at the, the stats are staggering and the engagement rate for the D'Amelios, the family together and for Charlie is just, um, it's, very, it's almost hard to believe that a 16 year old has billions, literally billions of likes. Um, and, you know, to give an example, and we did a campaign with um, Aerie brand, an American Eagle uh, brand. Um, a marketing firm called Shadow was tasked with putting together a campaign. And this right at the heart of when COVID-19 happened. So you have a lot of people feeling isolated. And it was about doing something about being real, 100% real. And original music, uh, my company helped create. But moreover, they did this campaign with Charlie. And they had over 2 billion views on TikTok for this brand. And it was, they had a uh, I think it was an 855% increase in traffic for this brand. And this all stemmed from Charlie doing a dance to an original song, telling a story that was authentic and relatable to, a, to the very aligned audience with that brand. And I mean, I would say just in terms of the D'Amelios, they, we say no to a lot of brands. My partner, I'm partners with a woman named Barbara Jones, um, who is fantastic executive and her firm outshine and my company merged together to do this project. And what we're finding is uh, the most powerful thing about the D'Amelio's is really the most powerful thing about the consumers, which is if they don't feel it, they don't do it. And that alignment is what makes them so successful. Yeah. And, and I think the stakes and Maddie, I'll bring you back and get higher, you know, as the issues get during the black lives matter, um, TikTok played a really important part. And I know Charlie, as a 16 year old, came out and took a stand. Um, I know that the Tulsa uh, Trump rally was sabotaged by TikTokers basically. So Maddie, how do you keep up with this on a day to day as the brands that you're working with are feeling the tumult of the times? Um, are the, what's the secret sauce that keeps you going? No, that's a great question. Um, it's a definitely you know challenging and uh, reflecting time for everyone, you know, as well as for the whole kind of society in the past, you know, four or five months. Now, during COVID, obviously, you know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of more people, right? I, I know some um, people posting questions in the, in the chat. More people, you know, different demographics, not just Gen Z, but also millennials, parents, grandparents, right? They turn to TikTok for inspiration, for uplifting content for you know, humorous content, for educational content during the COVID. And we have seen that trend accelerated in the past three, four months rapidly. Um, during the Black, Black Lives Matter, um, TikTok has you know, also become the leading destination for a lot of activity, right? And uh, Black Lives Matter is part of that. So we have, um, so from platform perspective, we have specific and uh, kind of in-app program to really kind of promote, to proactively identify the voice, the story, the inspirational movement to support that. And also from you know, funding perspective, we set aside, um, I think, 3 million to really you know, help um, those um, Black communities that has been impacted by COVID disproportionately, you know, based off their career, based on their you know, location, everything, we set aside 3 million to support that. And from uh, another perspective, we also um, set aside uh, 1 million to support those kind of different, you know, artists 
NGOs to really help them kind of get back to business as well. So yeah, we're you know definitely want to be part of that. We're doing our kind of social responsibility to promote that as well. That's that's great. So so Billy, what's your advice to brands? You've had so much experience with brands and and thinking about TikTok. What what would you say to them if they're ready to dabble? You know, I what I would say is that any brand, any great CMO is going to first have a very clear understanding of who they want to talk to. So I think that's where it all has to start. And whomever they're engaging with in terms of talent, really, they have to go, they have to look for that alignment. And where I, I have found some campaigns feel a little bit tone deaf, um, can often happen when somebody has a big audience, but they're not really aligned with the brand. And even though that seems like a very captain obvious observation, I've seen it happen a lot and I see it happen frequently. I also want to get back to, in terms of Black Lives Matter and the fact that Charlie, who's a teenager, made a statement to support it. And it really goes back in some ways to, I mean, it's, this is separate, but connected. Charlie was uncoached. She was not media trained. We didn't have a committee of people turn to her and say, this is the thing you need to say. This is part of what makes the D'Amelio family unique and why I think they connect. And frankly, why a lot of creators on TikTok connect because, and I don't want to overuse the word authenticity, but I think the unfiltered person in connecting with people. And because she is not scripted, that's why her statement in support of Black Lives Matter d connected with other people because she didn't do it in a scripted way. She was, she was herself. And I think that what, what, I, what I find refreshing, not as just how, how often we get to say no to opportunities that we're grateful for, but more that the criteria is less and less about money and more and more about mission alignment. So from a brand perspective, I would have to, I would encourage people to bring that to the table, not like we're selling shampoo, so-and-so has hair, let's get them. It's got to be more than that. Yeah, I think you said it to me, you said, don't think of it as an ad, think of it as a TikTok when, when, we, <laughs> when we spoke, and, you know, just to change your mindset. But of course, uh, somebody asked, like, you know, the metrics, having all the hits in the world, right. uh, traffic is great. But are you seeing this translate into sales? Oh, we're, we're seeing it translate on, on a multiple, multiple of, of, of ways. I mean, well, there was a comment somebody said, that now it's not America's Got Talent, it's America's Got TikTok. And they're not wrong. But it's not just talent for singing and dancing. It's about a lot of things. It's about motivational speakers. It's about, it's a, there's a whole host of voices. But really what it does is that it gives the power to the audience, to us, to decide what we like and what we don't like. And whatever the platform is, that power is a lot more fun. And frankly, it means that the things that do cut through are cutting through because from the bottom up and not the top down, which is historically what the entertainment business does. They decide someone's a star and then they force feed the universe. Now the universe builds a community and those stars rise. And I think what record companies, for example, from a music background did in the past is they, would go to clubs and listen to music. And now they're basically patrolling this, this world, this unique world, and they're, they're looking for things where they can add value. And I, again, I go back to the same thing in terms of brands. Um, how, how does one add value to the other? And the metrics are critical. And those engagement numbers for us, the engagement numbers for, for Dixie are, they're, for the parents, not just Charlie, they're double digit engagement numbers that we could, we parallel against any major celebrity. So let's, let's just go look at the dark side for a minute. Every social media network has this problem, disinformation, hate speech, uh, uh, bullying. What, what do you, question to either one of you, how, how, how do you think about this and where can brands like go awry with all of this? No, that's a you know that's very um, kind of critical question and a challenge you know not just for TikTok but as a you know as a social platform as a, you know content platform everyone is facing 
and it's not easy task to be frank, right? So what we are doing is, you know, to make sure that we can, you know, let, so essentially what we are doing is we leverage one technology, right? Really kind of to understand and to make sure all the videos people are seeing, people are uploading are appropriate, are safe for the users at all ages, right? And uh, also, secondly, we have a very strict and rigorous content moderation and process to make sure that there's no place for hate speech, for misinformation, for example, right? So, and also we're trying to partner with more and more third party, you know, vendors to verify, you know, what we're doing, to validate what we're doing, to make sure that, you know, we are being kind of, we're improving every day. So it's definitely, you know, number one on our kind of priority list to make sure that, you know, users and in our definition, brand is part of the user, right? So make sure they feel safe, they are safe on the TikTok environment. Yeah, um, I am gonna bring Josh back now to have him sort of summarize the tone of the questions and kind of wrap things up. But remember your weekend assignment, everybody. Play on TikTok and report back to Josh and David on how you felt because it, it definitely is the rabbit hole. Right, no, thanks uh, Robin, Maddie, thank you, Billy, great to, to see you again. Thanks for sort of participating in this. Um, and I think uh, as someone mentioned, I'm putting in the chat right now, our, uh, our intern who's 16 uh, went on TikTok and was one of the many people, one of the many teens who used it to, uh, you know, punk Trump during the rally. So she wrote a whole article on it. Uh, so just put that in the chat for a, a, a fun read. But, you know, I think we could have gone on and on. I think everyone's fascinated with sort of this intersection of technology, brands, and entertainment. So maybe we'll, you know, look to do a, a longer session at some point in the future. So really appreciate, you know, you guys uh, joining us today and, and hope to see you in the physical world, uh, you know, in the not too distant future. So thank you uh, again for joining us. I feel like we should go out dancing. 